Hey guys, Tyler here. The Republican Party and Donald Trump are going after video games yet again. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. I'm not surprised about this, mostly because like last year, according to like various news outlets, that Donald Trump had a meeting for various publishers and also industry experts about of course various violent video games and also like during this whole entire process in which they talked they also had like a clip on YouTube where they show a compilation of various violent video games and how they're going to use that as an argument against violent video games and so basically the GOP and the history of Donald Trump going after video games is not nothing new like for the case of the GOP essentially what they did in the past was like people like uh, Jack Thompson went after like games like uh, Mortal Kombat as well as Doom and so that's why the ESRB as we know it today is actually used as the rating system that we have in the United States so practically like what happened in the meeting that happened a few days ago after the shootings in El Paso in Ohio was that Donald Trump called for people to actually put some more restrictions on violent video games and of course like everybody including myself went against this whole entire concept on social media we must stop the glorification of violence in our society this includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace it is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence we must stop or substantially reduce this, and it has to begin immediately. But it was not just Donald Trump that went after violent video games. It was also various people within the GOP that went after the video games as well. Bernard, what about video games? So many of these um, school shooters and others have been sort of raised on a, a diet of violent video games. He work his way through something, and if... Uh... I were a bet man, I'd say that he probably logs six to eight hours a day playing um, one of those, you know, Fortnite or one of those uh, uh, video games where you're doing nothing but dehumanizing people by blowing their heads out. But the idea of these video games to dehumanize individuals, to um, have a game of shooting individuals and others, I've always felt that is a problem for um, future generations and others. First and foremost, it's very safe to say that Donald Trump is practically wrong on the issue of video games. Now, of course, as we all know, that the First Amendment basically like covers like a person free expression, including artistic expression. And so obviously since games are arts form, they basically are covered underneath the First Amendment. So by calling for restrictions against like violent video games, essentially is very much anti-First Amendment. And also number two, like there has been practically like a lot of studies about the subject between like violent video games and also like shootings. And most studies concluded that there is no correlation between a person becoming violent and also video games. Essentially the studies say that basically the reason why people are kind of aggressive of video games is mostly because of obviously different reasons. Like for example, if a person is playing like against like a boss level in a video game, essentially they get frustrated or sometimes like there are levels that are challenging and sometimes they get frustrated that way or sometimes like video games are competitive by nature and so when you play online against other players, essentially a person also sometimes get frustrated when you play online against people. Essentially when it comes down to the issue of like these mass shootings, Ultimately, video games are not telling people to go shoot other people. They're meant to be fun and entertainment. Essentially, when it comes down to this topic, it is mostly about like the issue of like mental health. Like a lot of these people who go out and shoot people just because of different reasons are mentally unstable people, and they should not have access to guns because they're mentally unstable. So it becomes a question of like mental instability, the main reason why people are actually, you know, wanting to shoot up other people. And also there's a question about like the motivation behind the shooters. Like practically the shooter in El Paso, Texas, he went after people because he hates Hispanics. 
And of course, there is no video game that I know of anyway that encouraged people to shoot up Hispanics. Of course, the daytime shooter was also like a leftist. He was like, of course, radicalized by leftist ideology. And so basically, he used some sort of ideology as a motivation to go after people during the shooting in Ohio. So essentially, like, there are a lot of elements that led people to go out and shoot people. However, those video games were never the main reason why those shooters went out to shoot other people. It's also worth mentioning that basically according to the data that's been published, that there are countries outside of America with much more lower rates of violence against like shootings and stuff. And what they show is that basically <laughs> like there's no problem with them trying to, you know, do like the violent video game stuff at their house and shootings. There's also like a study that basically showed that um, as the sale of violent, of violent video games go high in like United States, basically the crime decreases over time. Essentially because of the sale of video games that are at your home, people are now like putting their frustrations into those games and because they put more frustrations into those games, essentially they have less of an initiative to actually go out and do those kind of stinks. Now, of course, like, um, <clears throat> there's some people on the internet, namely some Republicans or like some sort of conservatives, who are trying to say, like, well, of course they don't make people violent, but, but there's like no but in this argument. Essentially, like, there's no way to actually defend this sort of, you know, topic, because it's been debunked so many times. And so I don't understand just why people are trying to regurgitate the but argument because essentially like there's been studies about this, there has been explanations about this, and so basically the president and the GOP are practically backwards on this issue. Now that's not to say of course that like the left, the radical left at least, is not, you know, <laughs> completely innocent about this topic. Because a while back, like basically what happened with the radical love was that they made a video about like connecting like Discord to people becoming white supremacists on NBC. They also, for the longest period of time, tried to blame people of doing violent stuff because because of Gamergate. They also, for the longest time, you know, <laughs> said that video games causes sexism. And, of course, that's the main reason why people are sexist, because of video games. So, in conclusion, Donald Trump is wrong for attacking video games. Many people on the left are also wrong for accusing video games of sexism. So, basically, both sides are wrong on this issue. However, since Donald Trump is, like, the President of the United States, and wants to attack the First Amendment by putting restrictions on video games, he has more power and more influence than those other people. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time.